this to my boys over there that uh, were on ice. Both teams were phenomenal, by the way. Um, so, you know, in, in life, you know, and in business, once you think that you're too good and you're satisfied, um, you know, then that's when somebody's going to come and underbid you and take your business, take your client. When you think that, you know, the, the, the quality is, is as good as it's going to get and you don't continue to work on it, that's when somebody's going to sneak in and take your job. So these three things I uh, really live in my life every day. They, they, they've uh, impacted me tremendously. And uh, I wanted to thank you, Coach, for really, you know, beating that in our head senior year. Um, your legacy, in, in, in my opinion, uh, is, is this right here. This over 30 years, 250 plus people that you've impacted that showed up here um, to, to honor you. This to me is more important than the wins and losses, which are, is a ridiculous statistic anyway. And I just want to thank you for everything, Coach. And uh, congratulations and best of luck with whatever you do. If I can help you in any way, please uh, let me know. Thank you. It's not often that Coach Bendorf brags about players. Uh, even as I got into my career, I'd call him occasionally and ask him about some players that I saw on rosters. You know, what's this guy like? What's going on there? The only guy he ever really kind of bragged on was Mike Emo. He kept telling me, Ed, I know he's short, but the guy's going to be a great college player. He turned into one at Virginia Tech, but first, he was captain of the 2001 James W. Robinson Ram Virginia State High School football champions. Mike Emo. First, I want to give praises to God for this evening. It's amazing. Um, Coach Bendorf, thank you for everything you've done. Um, it's, been, it's been amazing. Um, you know, Danny called me, I think, maybe two, three weeks ago, and he asked me, I don't know where he went, but Mike, you want to, you want to speak at Coach Bendorf? I said, absolutely. You know, there's, there's no way I couldn't. I had to, had to give my respects to you, Coach, and everything you've done. Um, he said three to five minutes. I said, man, I think I like three to five hours to talk about everything <laughs> Coach has done for me. But uh, I'll keep it, keep it short and tell you guys a couple of stories. Um, I think Coach Bendorf had a special ability. Um, he always had this to, to see us as equal, yet treat us differently at the same time. And I think that's important um, in, in anything you're doing because everyone needs a little something different. Um, and that's what he was able to give me. Um, I think that Coach Bendorf was able to look at me as a man before I was ready to see myself as a man, even. Um, and I thank you, and that, that, that touched me. And I realized that more as I, as I got older and, and, and as I went on through life. And I appreciate that. Um, yeah, and I think that, I think that respect started as soon as I, I, I touched down on campus, so to say, and we had our three 300s, I remember. <laughs> yeah, he still does them. <laughs> I don't think he's going to let those, he wasn't going to let those go. But um, I remember my freshman year, I was on varsity. Um, Coach Bender pulled me up, and it's, it's T.C. Williams week. Um, and I'm not going to name the, the player that, you know, got in trouble a little bit. As he was the running back that was ahead of me. And I remember Coach Bendorf just one day, and, and it was one, I think it was a block, and he was supposed to come down on an 18 buck sweep and block the tight end to backer. He missed it. And, you know, I, a lot of guys over here know Coach Bendorf when he just gets just hot and he's just, and he can't even say anything. There's no words coming out, it's just fume coming out of his ears. Just, you know, the white stuff starts to come on the side. I mean, he's, 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 he's out of his mind. And I'm, I'm sitting back here kind of chuckling. I'm a freshman. I'm young. I'm like, I'm like, who's he about to yell at now? And he turns at me. Emo, you're starting this week. You ready? <laughs> all right, coach. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, all right. You know, and, 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 and uh, you know, it went on to be a good game. I think I had like 75 yards rushing or something in, in my first game. And, and it was exciting. I, I loved it. Um, 
went on the next week and, and we played against Annandale Adams. <laughs> Coach laughs now. Yeah, we, uh, we played against Annandale Adams. And um, make a long story short, um, you know, I was kind of feeling myself. You know, I was a freshman. I was out there playing on, on, on varsity. I was starting. Um, and we were in a dogfight. It was a game we were supposed to win. And we ended up being in a dogfight. And I remember, I think we were at about maybe the 45-yard line or so, and we're going in to close the game out. We need to finish him out. It's fourth and one. Um, and he calls my number. I, I, I still remember. It's wing right, Lex, swap, uh, four lead. Is that right? Okay. I, I, I know exactly where it was at. Um, absolutely. And uh, I got stuffed. Absolutely stuffed. I mean, I didn't even get to the line of scrimmage. I mean, the guy I think was number 10. I don't remember his name. I, I remember him like it was yesterday. He got in the hole. Boom, he hit me. I, I went nowhere. And, and you know, we ended up losing that game. Uh, and it hurt. It hurt bad. Uh, and you have to understand, someone, I'm, I'm coming from BROYC, Little League uh, football, and I've never really had to deal with much adversity at that time. Um, I was faster than everyone else, so it was coming, it came pretty easy to me. Um, but I remember that. I remember we got on the bus, and I remember I, I felt like I really had just let all the seniors down and all the guys that were ahead of me, I just let those guys down. Coach Bender calls on me for the last play, and I need one yard, and I can't get it to close the game out. And I remember it just ripped me apart. I was just sick to my stomach. Um, I remember walking up, even the walkway towards, towards the bus, and I remember Coach t coming and talk to me, you know, and my head's just down, I'm sulking, I don't, I'm like, man, I don't know if I could do this. I need to be on freshman or JV or something, you know what I mean? It's just, this just isn't going to work. And Coach Bendor came to me and uh, he said, you're going to be fine. He said, you're going to be fine. He wasn't angry, and, and I'm used to seeing him, you know, like we all know, just the film coming out of his ears after a loss, but he wasn't angry. He looked at me and said, son, you're going to be fine. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're going to be just fine. When you fall, get up, you know? Get back in the weight room. You're going to work this off season. You remember this fourth and one. You remember this play for the rest of your life. And that's what he told me, and, 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 and I did. And, um, you know, I, I, it went on to have a pretty successful career uh, at, at, at Robinson. Um, another, and, and, and to go back on that, and I mean, it's just amazing, because Coach, you, you empowered me so much when you did that. You know, I, like I said, it's always been easy for me. So you have someone that sitting here looking at me and Mike, listen, you're gonna be fine. You know, you get in here, you work, you do everything you got to do, you'll be just fine. And, and that's exactly what I did. I took that power he gave me and put it into work. And like I said, I went on to have a pretty good season um, or career, so to say. Um, I also remember the regional championship against Centerville. And I, we, we lost that game also. And I, once again, I felt like I had uh, I let down a lot of the guys that were ahead of me. And once again, same feeling. I walked straight back in. I remember exactly where I'm sitting at in the locker room. I always sat in the first, first row, and Coach Bendorf comes down, and he sits next to me. And he says, it's, it's going to be OK. Once again, it's going to be OK. He said, I need you to do something. I need you, I need you to, to take over, and I need you to be a leader now. I need you to lead this team. Um, I didn't know what that meant. He said, by example, you know? I need you to be out there. I need you to work out. I need people to see your face. I need you to just lead by example. Um, you know, and I, and I did that to the best of my ability. Um, worked harder than I ever worked in my life. Um, we went on. We won the state championship the next year. I was state player of the year. I broke many records. I broke Marcus's records. He's an amazing running back over there. He didn't have to come up here, but... Uh, I watched everything he did before he taught me everything I knew, so to say. Um, but, um, Coach, you taught me how to lead. You know, you taught me how to lead. Uh, 
on, off the field. I still use the same things now. Not all the lip service, lead by example. Let everyone see you, let them see your face, let them see you work. You know, the people around you will appreciate that and in turn, they'll follow you. Um, it was powerful. Um, you know, in conclusion, I just, I just want to say thank you again, Coach Benno, for everything that you've done for me and all the players here that didn't get opportunity to speak. We all thank you from the bottoms of our heart. Um, you taught me the characteristics of how to be a man before I even knew what it meant to be a man. Um, you empowered me. Take ownership, take leadership of whatever I'm doing. Take responsibility. And, and you taught me leadership. You taught me what it meant. And you, you, know, you helped an ordinary person like myself at 5'5", five, five, 140 pounds, freshman, become extraordinary every day and all the time. I'm always thinking and striving to make you proud at the same time for everything you've done for me. So I thank you and I appreciate it.